Happy Thursday, my fabulous, fantastic, furry friends. So let's talk about my favorite subject, other than Gus. <laughs> but how is Gus, my new puppy? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Gus, come. Gus, sit. Good boy. Good boy. Maybe learn how to use your phone. <laughs> anyway, tonight's topic is the media and how they love to put the thumb on the scale when it comes to the midterm elections, or any other election for that matter. New study by the Media Research Center, or Merck, finds that nearly 90% of recent coverage of Republicans on the ABC, CBS, and NBC evening newscasts turned out to be negative. I know, that's about as surprising as Jesse Waters chugging Rogaine. <laughs> Gets to the bloodstream faster. <laughs> now, these networks usually give Republicans more bad press than poison lawn darts for preemies, but now they've jacked it up, which is especially weird given it's the Republicans who are out of power. They're the underdog, aren't they? And generally, it's the incumbents who have a track record that should be picked apart. But unless it's Joe's nose, no one's doing any picking. <laughs> or eating. <laughs> Rather than focus on the Dems' failures on the economy, crime, and the border, they actually hammer the challenger's criticism of that stuff instead. Suddenly, it's hysteria to point out such flaws to the powers that be. In the old days, that's what journalists used to do. But now it's just Republicans, and then they pay for it. In the period between September 1st and October 26th, also known as prime ferret mating season, <laughs> get out your binoculars. <laughs> Only six positive statements were made about Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker versus 50 negatives. Meanwhile, the left-loving media failed to lay a glove on Herschel's Democratic rival, Raphael Warnock, who may have more skeletons in his closet than Jeffrey Dahmer after Fashion Week. <laughs> Meanwhile, there were only two positive statements for Pennsylvania Senate candidate Dr. Oz compared to nine negative. And how much you want to bet those two positive statements were his name and his occupation. And then there's poor Carrie Lake running for Arizona governor. Not a single nice thing to say about her. Hell, they could at least compliment her bone structure. <laughs> Have you seen how square her jawline is? No wonder all my Lego figurines keep hitting on her. Her face is like a gorgeous, perfectly solved Rubik's cube. She's the world's sexiest graham cracker. Maybe it's just me. Meanwhile, look at what they do for Joe Biden, the guy who put corn pop in his place and Preparation H on his BLT. <laughs> it's called a BLTH. In 2018, he accounted for 48% of all campaign airtime. To be fair, though, most of it consisted of Joe downing a pint of chunky monkey. But this year, the media couldn't give a rat's ass about the dawdling dope. They turned off the cameras because they realized less coverage is better than facing the deceitful reality they created. So between September 1st and October 26th, there's just 34 minutes of Biden coverage. And half of that was him just trying to get his coat on. not his fault. Clearly that day he didn't get his recommended daily allowance of sniffed ponytail. <laughs> Comes in a jar. So is it any surprise that Republicans aren't responding to polls? It's something called non-response bias, which sounds like me when I let cats calls go to voicemail. <laughs> but it's when people don't respond to surveys about their choices because of all the negative coverage. And it makes sense. Why would you respond to a poll if everyone says you're evil? I mean, unless you're like Kilmeade sitting alone at home in the dark <laughs> by himself drinking gin out of a bottle, watching Three's Company reruns, <laughs> and dying to have some, if any, human interaction. <laughs> and by the way, how do you know if the caller is really a legitimate pollster and not a twisted neighbor looking to take a dump on your front lawn? I've seen it happen, because I was the neighbor. <coughs> the New York Times calls non-response bias a worrisome pattern, because now they aren't able to discern what key states and districts where Dems could face an upset on election day.
But hey, you reap what you sow, bitches. Did I just say that out loud? So now they can't tell whether the races will be close or if they'll get blown out like Dana's hair at her high school prom. <laughs> uh, her hair was so high, her curling iron got a nosebleed. But why should conservatives respond to polls when people say stuff like this about them? A historian will say what was at stake tonight and this week was the fact whether we will be a democracy in the future, whether our children will be arrested and conceivably killed. We're on the edge of a brutal authoritarian system, and it could be a week away. You get that? If Republicans win, children are going to get killed. <laughs> that guy is a historian. How the hell did that happen? Did he send away for a I'm a historian card from the back of a Wheaties box? If he could be a historian, then I could be a pharmacist. <laughs> and you don't want that. <laughs> but God, I do. <laughs> Then there's this creep. I read a, a poll just yesterday that white Republican suburban women are now going to vote Republican. Why? It's almost like roaches voting for raid. <laughs> I like how, I gotta say, I love how she looks up as though it's coming to her like an intellectual thought. She'd been waiting all day to say that, comparing white women to roaches on the view they call that Thursday. <laughs> Here's a comparison for you, Sonny. You're dumber than <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. That's, that's not a comparison at all. I really do need to get some sleep. But in this climate where the Dems and media collude to demonize millions of voters, it's no surprise that those on the right keep their mouths shut. And then come Tuesday, just like a certain Tuesday way back when in 2016, the media and the Dems won't know what hit them. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He coined the phrase, what's cooking, good looking? Former CIA operative and host of Black Files Declassified on Discovery Science Channel, Mike Baker. He's created more turnovers than a pastry chef. Former NFL player, Jack Brewer. She spends more time in makeup than Warp from Star Trek. Fox News contributor, Kat Tim. I don't know who that is. And he can see everyone's house from up there. My massive sidekick in the NWA's world television champion, Tyrus. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing good, I, although you, you made it sound like sitting at home drinking gin out of a bottle was a bad thing. Yes. <laughs> now I'm completely or rethinking me, my the, hobby. Yeah, it's <laughs> Kill Me's only thing. Um, isn't this kind of a, a, a... I mean, I know that the poll isn't surprising or that actually the research isn't surprising, but we have to be reminded that this is a form of meddling in elections by putting your thumb on the scale. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. And... I mean, it's, it's been going on for a long time, obviously. Polling is a long and honored tradition. Mm -hmm. But I think it's never been as bad in terms of just its, its lack of uh, ability to predict anything mm -hmm. than it has been over the past decade or so, right? Yeah. And it is exactly because what you pointed out, which is, again, we, and we get these calls, and, and I do the exact same thing. I say, eh, I'm good, thank you. Or there have been a couple of times, I hate to admit it, when I've just screwed with them. Yeah. And, 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 and I know that my own little ability to screw with a pollster is not going to sway the whole, you know, survey result. Mm. But there's just something about it. The, the, the politics, I don't know that we've ever seen it as, as uh, dysfunctional and uncivil as it is now. And I know I'm just, I'm, I, I don't even sound so gloomy. No, it's okay. But it's very a depressing time. I, uh, I love screwing with pollsters. I often will hide Frank Luntz's toupee. <laughs> <laughs> green room. It's amazing. Sometimes it'll run off on its own. <laughs> Dragged off by your dog, Gus. <laughs> yes, Jack. Good to see you. It's been a while. Been hanging in Florida. Yeah, South yeah. Florida. It's yeah. Good, though. Yeah, you, you happy to be back here in New York? I am. I'm just hoping those pollsters, every time they call me, Gray, yeah. I pick up the phone and I'm thinking to myself, did they tap my phone? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a black, I'm a black conservative. Did they tap my phone? <laughs> And I hang up right away. Yeah. <laughs> but do you, you, you ever get these calls? Because I've never got a call. I've gotten, I think, three. Yeah. And I hang up. Yeah. I'm serious. I never, you never know what to expect this day and age. Mm -hmm. Who's calling your phone? 
Uh, people see you on TV. You can't make the comments that you want to make. And so I just try to stay away from it, to be honest with you. Yeah. And I hope the silent majority comes out in droves next week. Yeah, I mean, but it's going to be hard to tell. <laughs> Speaking of, Tyrus, you showed me an interesting text, yeah. which was Yeah, hilarious. so they don't just call me. They text me. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, can, we, can we cue this up? Can we get this on the big screen? Where is it? Yeah. So uh, Joshua from, I don't, where are my glasses at? They put it in the furthest one for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, George. I guess we're using government names now. It's <laughs> Joshua again with Black Voters Matter. Election day is Tuesday. Will you build power with us and be a voter? Hashtag we won't black down. Clever. I'm a black Republican. Cool. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your view. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> the only he was like ew and hung up. Like, that's exactly. That's ex so they they don't care if if the brothers vote. Yeah. They only care if we vote in their tent. Yeah. So that's why no one wants to talk to them. Yeah. But I was in a weird mood <laughs> and decided to respond. And I have a sneaking suspicion. Joshua mm -hmm. looks more like my sweatshirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to make... No, no doubt. And Greg, this is crazy. <laughs> you just got I a text? I almost the same text, man. <laughs> <laughs> Holy I, I got one, <laughs> too. <laughs> Defend the Mike black Baker. vote. Mike Baker, yeah, yeah. Defend the black vote. It's about making sure black men don't let our community down. Mm -hmm. So they're like guilt tripping us <laughs> into voting for these policies. <laughs> but how'd they find us? Both. Yeah. Apparently, we stick out like sore thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you're onto something when you said they tap your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike yeah, Baker's sure. confusing. I, yeah. I would think a bro I've met a brother named Mike Baker before. You know? Yeah, that's true. It's in the name. Yeah. yeah. It, it is in the name. Yeah. It is yeah. In the name. yeah. Kat, do you have any Kat, text you that you text? can actually show us? <laughs> <laughs> Just scroll past the you pictures. You wish. <laughs> uh, look, I've, I've certainly engaged in desperate end of times hyperbole before myself, right. mm -hmm. but never when things are going well, yeah. like not when things are going my way. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the, the kids are gonna die. And then the raid comment, mm -hmm. like, look, white suburban women don't always love me. Mm -hmm. Their yeah. dads sure do. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> they don't always. It's okay. I love you guys anyway. But um, <laughs> to say that that like wrote just a raid, it's like saying that they by voting for a Republican as a white suburban woman, you're killing yourself. Mm -hmm. That is extremely desperate end of time hyperbole, hyperbole. And if you had some other way to go or something else to say, you probably wouldn't go with something that ridiculous. Didn't you enjoy the way she looked up? Like It was her this, best work. Yeah, like, she was like, waiting yeah. all day in the shower. She was practicing it. <laughs> <laughs> she oh, wanted the, yeah. the, our version of Jean to come out with a microphone for her, open it in the case so she could drop it. Drop it. it. Yeah. And everyone yeah. was like, oh! As if, you know, I just put this turn of phrase together. I just Here came up with this. Yeah. It's yeah. like uh, Roach is voting for Raid. It's like, I bet you, you if you Google that, that statement, 100 people have said it before her. All right. Well, I think we've solved a lot of world's problems. <laughs> oh, I love. So that's it? End of show? Yeah, that's it. Well, I'm heading out early. I got stuff I got to do. <laughs> so there's going to be about another 50 minutes or so of just silence, awkward silence, so we can let Mike talk, but nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> no. One no. disconnected sentence after uh, another. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.